when you enter the museum, it's kind of like 21st century to 19th century. And it's pretty cool because you see people in normal clothes and then you come in and then they're all dressed up. It's really cool. From here you have the roving and then it can go to our spinners and they can spin it. They teach you about like what children did back then, what kind of chores there were. Instead of uh, like just having a sign that says all the information, I like how they show you how to do things. So yeah, you could check your corn after a few weeks of drying on the cob. What makes the village come alive is the costume historical interpreters. They have a chance to connect with our guests, share their stories. They're in period clothes, they set the stage, and it takes them back to a different place. Many have worked here for 10, 20, 30, so a couple even 40 years here at the museum because they love what they're doing. They love the experience engaging with the public, but it's also doing research above and beyond the roles that we give them in the historic village. But you have to write it in cursive. Finding a way to be able to retain or sustain our blacksmiths and coopers and tinsmiths and other people, trades that are now being lost to the modern world. A lot of visitors coming through don't realize that our staff out in the historic village are actually paid workers here at the museum. Oh, hi, how are you doing? It's great to look at these old buildings, but they were inhabited and they were used. That's what the interpreters bring. They're just trying to uh, bridge a gap between the old building and, and you. So it was opened as a tailor shop in 1849. I wanted to start creating, as a reenactor, clothes that looked really you know, correct and authentic. So I could have that experience, but then other people would say, hey, that person sort of stands out and actually really looks the part. Somewhere in this room, he had to keep that sewing machine. The back room, which was actually John Quinn, the original tailor's living space, um, has been converted into a room that's specifically for learning and especially for younger people. It is so much better than reading a sign or hearing an audio or seeing a video. It's that one-on-one -on -one personal touch that really makes uh, our site special and our staff special as well. Good day, how are you? Good, how are you? They are the shining stars, as far as I'm concerned. I've been here, you know, multiple times every summer since I moved to the area. The level of knowledge is really awesome. No matter how many times you come, you learn something. They're in full costume, and they're, you know, standing by the fire, doing, doing the work, and explaining what's happening all the way through. Um, I saw coffee being roasted today here for the first time. It would be a quarter of the experience to just walk in houses and look, right? I mean, you walk into houses here and, and there's someone who knows when this house was built, where was it built, who built it, what was their profession, how many children did they have, here's their portraits. How many sheep do you have? When you walk into the museum and you see people with costume, it makes you interested, so you go and like ask them something and then they tell you keeping alive the history of these buildings and these areas of New York that will soon be forgotten if we don't continue to try to keep organizations like this going. When you live it, it's a whole different experience. We're going to lose that living history if we don't have, you know, a place like Genesee Country Village Museum to send our kids to. I learned more since I've become a member here than I think I ever did in a history class. History is not dead yet. It's still alive. We can continue to learn from it that we can continue to improve as people. We can have a connection with those who lived a long time ago, which I believe is really, really important. People are such an important part of this museum. Without the people, there, there would be no museum.